My name is Frederick, and today we'll be talking about the salmon that can be found in, lake, in the Great Lakes. So starting off, we have the most popular and the biggest one known, and that is Chinook salmon, aka king salmon. So they start that life off small, and then after birth, they move immediately to the ocean to start their life after the, the par stage. And then that's where they lose all their stripes, and they turn and, and come to look like this. King salmon can get easily up to 50 pounds and higher. And then they have very distinct characteristics. They have silver in the tail and silver along the body with lots of spotted spots on their back. Then moving on, we have pink salmon. So for pink salmon, they're known because they don't have any silver gradient in the tail. And then in this book, another photo of them. They're also known as humpback salmon because while they're in the spawning phase, they develop a hump in their back. That's how they get that nickname, but they have a pink hue to them. Definitely can't see it on camera, but you can definitely see it in person. And then so they also migrate to the ocean as soon as they spawn. And then moving on, we have the coho salmon. So they have no spots on their gill flaps. And that's one way to, to distinct which they are. So, and after a year of, after being born, then they migrate to the ocean, unlike the other ones that immediately just start the trek as soon as they're born. So, and then finally, we have the Atlantic salmon. It's actually the only salmon that is native to the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> and then when salmon are ready to breed, they swim upstream and then they stop eating completely and they only their only focus is reproduction and then they're, they just start to change in characteristic like this is the coho and so this is what it looks like in the ocean and then this is what it looks like when it's moving upstream for breeding and it develops a kite which is a, a hook in the jaw which makes them more appealing to their to attract mates and that's seen in many, like this is the Chinook salmon, and it also develops a kite and turns, uh, changes color. The humpback salmon, regularly, it does not have the hump, but when it turn, comes to breeding season, it develops that, and that's its deciding factor to make it more appealing. I'm moving on to my Atlantic salmon on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to the Atlantic salmon, they develop different colors and a hook in the jaw when they start. And when all the when all the salmon start to breed, they stop eating completely, and their flesh basically begins to decompose because it uses all the muscle and fat that's in its body as energy to move upstream. And that is all I have for you today, the salmon in the Great Lakes. Any questions? What is the salmon season in New York? It starts from early September and then, move, and then ends in early November. That's like the primal time is around October. What is the bag limit? The bag limit, it changes for different species, like for Chinook, which is this one. It's three, same with coho and pink salmon, but for Atlantic salmon, it is only one per day. And that is all we have for today.